Hey everyone, this is A Cats. I wanted to go over a new custom node that I made. Uh, it's called AK IP Adapter Custom Weights. Um, so I just want to kind of explain why I created this node and how you can use it to make some interesting animations. So if you haven't already seen Latent Visions or Mateo's video on how to use the IP Adapter Weights to schedule image transitions, I highly recommend you go watch that video. But to get a basic idea of how it works, it's used to crossfade between a set of reference images using IP adapters. And so let's say I have four images, then I'll basically have my images partitioned into two image batches. The first image batch will contain all my odd numbered images, so first, third, fifth, etc. And my second image batch will contain all my even numbered images, so second, fourth. And then what this node will do is basically um, crossfade the weights between these batches. So my first image will decrease in weight as the second image is increasing in weight. So you'll get this kind of crossfade effect between them and so on and so forth. And so it's a, here's a little example of how that looks after rendering out a video. And so this node is fantastic. The only issue I had with it is I wanted to have more control over exactly when these transitions would occur. So right now, let's say I have four images, then you know the first transition is going to happen about a quarter of the way through the animation. The second is going to happen around halfway through the animation. And then the third transition is about 75% of the way. But I wanted to have it so that my first transition would, let's say, happen around halfway through the video and then the second would be around 80% and then 90% of the way. Um, and so to do this, I created the IP adapter custom weights node, which gives you control over exactly at which frame to start these transitions at, and also how many frames to transition over. So to get an idea of how this new custom node works, let's look at an example. So we're gonna use the same four reference images as we had in, in the previous generation. But this time, I'm specifying different transition points. So here we have a total of 128 frames for the entire animation. And I'm saying, according to this string format, that at frame index 50, I want to transition to an IP adapter weight of 0, 0.0 over 20 frames. And then followed by, at a frame index of 80, I want to transition back to a weight of 1.0 for 20 frames. And finally, at a frame index of 100, I want to transition back to 0, 0.0 for 10 frames. And it's important to note that by default, this custom weights node will start at a weight of 1.0. So initially we're at 1.0 and then we transition to zero, back to one, and then finally to zero. And to get an idea of what that looks like here, you can see uh, basically here's all the values. So we're starting at one all the way until frame index 50 and then for 20 frames, we transition to a weight of zero, and then 80, we start transitioning back to one and so on and so forth. You can see that represented by the image batch here, we basically are starting with the original or the first reference images, and then we transition to the second, then to the third, and finally to the fourth. And you can also see how that looks like using this mask preview where 1.0 represents white, 0, 0.0 represents black. So for the first 50 frames, we're essentially staying at a weight of one, and then we're slowly crossfading to a weight of zero, and then back to one, and then finally back to zero. So here's an example of what that looks like after rendering the video. You can see that the first reference image stays on screen for longer, and then about halfway through the video, transitions to the next reference image, and so on and so forth. So one last thing to note about this custom node is that you can actually specify the easing function used to interpolate between frames or weights. So by default, we're using a linear interpolation function that's defined by this default timing parameter, but you can change that from linear to ease in and out or ease in, ease out. And you can also be very explicit and say, I want for this first transition to use an ease in function. And then maybe on the second transition, I want to use an ease in out uh, interpolation function. And finally, I want to use an ease out 
And to get an idea of how each of these different easing functions compare with one another, I have written a guide where I go into depth on how each of the easing function changes the output um, and the look of the transitions. And I will be posting this guide in the description if you want to take a look for more information. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found this guide useful. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.